Intake, how may I help you? When right now? He was just shot. He had a bench warrant. He failed to appear in court. He had a, a criminal mischief and two counts of violation of probation. And they just brought it, him to us finally. I was just walking down the street. Um, I guess I had a bench warrant for not appearing in court and a cop knew me by face and just turned around and picked me up. Okay, the nurse said you can have an extra blanket to roll up to keep your arm up, okay? while you're in your room. Well, he just told me when I asked what had happened to his arm that he was robbing a drug dealer and he stated that he was trying to be good to keep the drugs off the street. Well, I have a reputation as a drug dealer, um, a gang member, um, just a bad kid. Now that I'm 18, this should, it'll just be dropped, won't it? No. It won't. No. That's what juveniles think. I mean, it's up to the judge, but you're not really behaving yourself right now. Yeah, I am. I ain't been getting, I ain't gotten no trouble in a couple months. Besides this. I had run away from home when I was 17. Just wasn't talking to my mom, wasn't getting along real well. And so I didn't go to that court date because I wasn't at home. Tell me exactly what happened to your arm. Well, one of my boys told me that this drug dealer was trying to get with his lady. So I had his lady set him up, and I was going to rob him and take his weed. How would you have the lady set him up? Because he was trying to get with her. So then she called him over and said that her boy wanted some weed. And when she gave him a hug, I just started hitting him and shit. And then he pulled out hitting the gun. Hitting him with what, your fist? Yeah, and then he pulled out the gun from under the seat and just shot me. And they decided not to charge you? with attempted robbery? Mm-hmm. I like the rush of seeing how close I can get to getting caught without actually getting caught. That's kind of what I like to do. What do you think counseling's gonna help you? What, this, no, actually, this, um, this getting shot thing helped me. It made me realize when I was close to dying. Well, I was living on the streets until I just got shot, and then when I got shot, um, I begged my mom to let me come back. And she let me do it, but it's hard out there. Have a seat and we'll give your mom a call. Hello? Hi, can I please speak with Deanna? Um, this is her. Okay. Um, Devin was arrested for his bench warrant and he'll have Hi. a detention hearing on Monday morning. Okay. And then have you been having any problems with Devin at home? You don't suspect any drug use, gang activity? Nothing. Nothing at all? Okay. My mom and I, we don't always get along. I mean, well, most of the time we don't get along, but um, she sticks with me a lot of the time. Would you like to speak to him? Sure. Okay. Hello? Hey. You're going to be able to make it on Monday? Yeah, I will be there. All right. I'm, if I don't get out, the only thing I can do is give me a at most 120 day commitment. Okay. So, I don't know, I guess I'll see you on Monday. Okay. All right, love you. All right, love you too. Bye. Bye. We just started recently speaking. When I got shot, she came into the hospital she, and she just started crying and then took me home and we'd been trying to build another, build our relationship back up. That one hand on top of your head. One hand. Yeah, shot. Hey! Yeah, shot. Yeah. Huh? 
when I got shot. Shit, I was, I was robbing, dude. I got the weed, I started stealing off of him, and then he reaches over the seat, pulls out a gun, and had it aimed at my chest, but I moved at the last minute and it hit me in the arm. A little flesh wound, that's it. Hell no, that shit hurt, man, in my bone. Like, I can't even move my lower arm or nothing. I've been locked up three of the past four years. Three of the past four years, that's a lot of my childhood. Come on, man, you got to get it together, man. You got to be tired of seeing us, man. Teenage years right down the drain. I mean, this is the time I'm supposed to be having the most fun of my life. I've been inside these damn cells. Can't wait to get out of here and just start, start a new life. Who's the brothers? You two are brothers? Those two are brothers. They're on probation. They participate with the vice lords. They've damaged about 20 vehicles. 20 vehicles? Yeah. It was like some weeks ago, we had did some stuff over there at the bus station, but they just not coming to get us. You guys are the world's dumbest criminal. You got to try video. They had a picture of me. They were like, is this your son? My mom was like, no. Because on the picture, it don't look like me. So they're like, we about to charge you for lying to the police. Because my mom on probation, too. So they said, if I don't turn myself in, they were going to give my mama six years. Hey, come on back. Step back a little bit. I'm very mad at myself. I wish I never done the things I did. Okay. The judge, she's gonna let you know how funny it is. It's not no laughing matter. You understand? Because you just caught red-handed. You know the routine by now, I'm sure, right? Go ahead, have a seat. When I do this intake, I'm not gonna ask you if you did any of this, and I don't want you to tell me, you know, your side of the story. I'm not gonna do that, okay? You've been here, this is your sixth complaint, no, actually, this will be your seventh complaint. You just left here. And that is, what, two weeks later and you're here? He has, like, a quiet reserve about him. And for somebody that has, like, a history like that, like, his disposition doesn't add up. I'm looking at your history here, and I see that you first got arrested when you were 11 years old. His dad is incarcerated for dealing crack, he said. And then a month later, you were arrested for mischief, battery, consumption, intimidation, robbery, and theft. You know, there's 10 kids. It's a large family. Um, five have been here. So that tells me, you know, there's more to the story. He has seen a lot. <sighs> were your parents contacted? Oh, yeah. You care to talk to them again? Would you like to talk to your parents again? Yes. yes. Keep signing. You got seven pages total. Hello. Yes, this is Lake County Juvenile Center. I'm calling for the parent of guarding of Kentrell Pertle. Yes. Okay, he was brought in by Gary Police Department for criminal mischief, theft, and criminal trespass. Okay. Okay, he's going to have a D hearing on Monday at 8 o'clock in the morning. What about my other son, Kenneth? He's here as well. Same uh, Monday at 8 o'clock. Monday at 8? Correct. Uh, would you like to talk to your son, Contrell? Okay, yes. Okay, go ahead. Hello? Yeah. You heard what he said, right? Monday. Uh huh. So they might let you go. Well, I ain't do nothing, though. Okay, so therefore, they might let you go. Well, I see y'all tomorrow. Okay. I love you. Love you too. Kentrell? That's him. That's him. Is it Kenneth or Kentrell? His name is Kentrell. My name is Kenneth. Okay. I just wish you never got yourself into this. 
always, I always try to be the big brother, tell him, don't do bad stuff. Now you need to know that there's a good chance on Monday you might not go home. He's basically one of those incidents where we didn't practically raise the kid. I turned 18 on June 26th, and um, around the end of April, I went on the run, so I didn't go to my last court date. Shark, you got to be tired of this, man. Straight up. You can't well, Shark. And I done seen this guy about four or five times, and he's basically one of those incidents where I practically raised the kid. This gunshot wound, man, I mean, that kind of turned me around. Made me kind of think, man, I was this close to being killed. I mean, I want to do something with my life. I'm tired of coming back into this damn place. Okay, go ahead and sign right there. Make sure everything's correct. Now, you need to know that there's a good chance you might not go home on Monday. Yeah. Because you're currently on probation and you have an open complaint. That may be the case, but uh, as far as come Monday when court, the judge made the decision whether or not you can go home. There's a good chance you, you need to know that. So. When you were arrested, did Gary Police Department tell you what charges you were arrested for? No. Okay, they arrested you for criminal mischief, theft, and criminal trespass. Yeah, we just get bored because they ain't got no type of activities, no like clubs, no fun centers or nothing out here. So that's why people, they just trying to have fun even though it's breaking the law, but they think of it as having fun. You know, you're a year away from 18. This is your seventh complaint. What do you want the court to do with you? Like, give me a year of house arrest. A year of house arrest? Go ahead and walk on the right side of the hallway. I hope he get out. He don't know how this is. He, don't, he ain't never been in this situation like this where he had to come here and do no days in here. He don't know how to react in here. He don't know what to do and consequences and stuff if you do something bad in here. Read these rules. His brother's here as well, so I'm not sure where Lonnie want to put him at. He don't know, like, he's still a little kid. He don't need to be in hell. Alan did the intake on your brother, and uh, he's telling me you accidentally shot him in the stomach last year. That's when I was 11. That's when you were 11 yeah. that you accidentally did that? Wow. That's, okay. when, that's when I first got into the juvenile system. Oh. You still think about that? I always. I'm going to take this box up to your spot and cough. Go ahead. You're going to squat down like the catcher and cough twice. Yeah, just like that. Squat down, cough twice. <coughs> All right, one more. You got to cough twice. <coughs> you got to make sure he's separated, though. I can't put him over there with his brother. That's what I'm saying. Put him up there and put his brother in the lower side each spot. You want to keep him separated so that when um, court comes, they, they can't get their stories to match. They can't lie. You put this lice on. You just can't kill any, any lice if you have lice. If not, it's not going to hurt you. Go ahead. So that's why we keep him separated. So he won't see his brother until his court day. I've been on probation since 2003 or 2004. I've had multiple violations. I mean, I burnt all my bridges. Turned his light out. I just kept getting in trouble, bringing trouble all around me. Turning it through one person is, is probably the hardest thing in the world to do. You can start with a child this small, and then you're around it constantly every day, and it just takes one bad seed to say, hey, no, man, come this way. And then there he goes, and, you, and you've lost him. At first, I was living with my, my stepmom. I started bringing drugs and alcohol into her house. She kicked me out. 
It, it can be frustrating, and it gets frustrating when you pick up the paper and you know you put in a lot of hard work to a kid and he or she is about to do 20 to 25 years in prison. It becomes frustrating. I got one of my closest friends arrested with me. His dad didn't want me there no more because we ever got him arrested. When I first started, it was like uh, I was trying to help these kids out, you know? I had more of the intention to help these kids out. Now, to be honest, it's it's I don't really look at it that way no more. And then I was stealing from people that were closest to me, so no one really trusted me anymore. No matter how many times I tell this kid, you know, that, hey, uh, you know, there's other choices, you know, hey, I see him next week coming, you know. Every time I got in trouble, I'd be like, all right, this is the last time. I'll say whatever I can say to get out of trouble. But this time I can't say nothing. I just have to show them. The one thing I like working with children is that once they turn 18, the record is clean. Everything starts new. And I would tell them, you know, now you got a second chance. You're on your way. I know I can make it in life. I know I can do the right thing. I can't stop getting behind the wheel. Like I was walking down the street and I seen somebody had left the keys in the ignition and I took that car too. He's got a need for speed. It's not just a video yeah. game. People really need it. Yeah, People who's in these places like this ain't just bad kids. They just make bad choices at that time. Yeah, I've been to two high speed chases. Three, four. And they charged me with escape. They told me it was a class D felony. You ain't got to worry about that. And they calling me an escape. You got to worry about that. They just trying to stay. People can't judge the book by its cover. They don't understand why we do stuff illegal, like sell drugs and stuff. It ain't that easy to get a job, and I don't want to see my family out on the streets. How many guys are ready to make a change in your life today? I want you to raise your hand. I want you to hold it there for a minute. Every day I think about how I'm going to survive when I go outside, because I'm going to be able to come back home peacefully. But you know what? The minute you show up at someone's house and someone pops a cold brew in your face, what are you going to do? <laughs> exactly. We got one honest person in here. I just need to be in a different environment with people where it's less violence happening, less bad activities going on in the neighborhood. That's where I think I need to be. I acknowledge, Lord, that you've done everything for me by dying on the cross, by raising from the dead. I've been through so many of these court dates. I don't know, I mean, it's right now in my head, it's a 50-50, detained or released. I mean, you think about it, a judge, you got this prosecutor, that's a, a lot of big people to go against when you're just by yourself. When you sleep in, in here, you always think about what's gonna happen in court, like what they gonna say, what they gonna do to, do to you, if they gonna detain you or if they gonna release you. And when your court day comes, if they say you detained, I might cry because I ain't gonna be able to see my parents my family, no more. I can't be doing this. I'm 18 years old. I got a lot of years to live. And if I keep messing around with this, I'm gonna end up dead or in jail. Once you get into the system, ain't no turning back. <laughs> and here, you always think about your court dates, think about what's gonna happen in court, like what they gonna say, what they gonna do to you. Hi guys, uh, my name is Attorney Don Rock. I've been appointed by the court to represent both of you tomorrow for the detention hearing. 
All right. When was the last time that you guys had a chance to see each other? Friday at NT. Okay. One of the challenges that we're going to have is convincing the court and the judge in particular that despite you having been here before and not learned your lesson, that you're going to learn your lesson this time and not get into trouble again. So help me understand some of the things that are going on in your life that help demonstrate that. Like, the, like when school started, I was going to get on a basketball team. I, I was going to get a job. I had a lot of things going on that better than getting in trouble. Obviously, being in here makes it more difficult to accomplish those kind of goals. So the good thing that both of you have going for you is the purpose of this entire system is to help you guys get back on track. It doesn't mean this is going to be a cakewalk, and obviously you guys have been living through this now the last couple of days and know that this is a very serious situation. Yes, it is. So, Kentrell, let me talk to you a little bit first about what things do you do when, when you're not here? I play ball. Where do you play ball at? At the court. And tell me a little bit about that. What do you do? What kind of what position do you play? I just play ball. And um, what else do you do besides playing basketball? Chill. I just wish you never got yourself into this. You still a little kid. I just pray every day, like I hope you get out. I know you're a very quiet person, but I mean, you got to make a decision if you want to stay in here or not. Because when it comes time to look the judge in the eye and say, you know, here's why I need to get out of here and why I need to go home. You know, here's what I'm going to do next time. You know, why, why I'm not going to come back and, you know, be handcuffed and brought in by the police next time. Later on in life, I will be a role model for my little brother. I thought I get myself together. I can't teach him now because we're in the same situation now. Can't teach him now. But later on in life, I will teach him. We'll put both you guys on the stand ask you guys some questions, and the prosecutor's going to have a chance to ask you guys some questions. And she's tough. And she is tough. I mean, her job is to protect society from people who commit crimes and people who commit crimes repeatedly. And that's what she sees in you two right now. Okay, let's be frank. Like, they decide what they're going to give us. Like, if they decide to give us, let's go home with restrictions, I want it to be like two months of house arrest, 40 hours of community service. All right, Ken, we're not going to be in a position to give specifics about, you know, the terms of your release. We, we're going to leave that up to the judge, okay? I mean, if we come in there saying you want X, Y, and Z, we're not going to get very far. We've got to come in there on your hands and knees saying, I am so sorry, this is never going to happen again. So I, I'm not going to get into discussions about, you know, um, what hours of the day you want to be released and what hours of the day you want to be on home arrest. We're going to go in there saying we are sorry and this is never going to happen again and you will not see me back uh, in handcuffs getting out of a police car coming into this detention center. If the judge thinks that you guys are an ongoing threat and that you're still a danger, get used to this place. Warrant. What you do to get that bench warrant, though? Go and not go to court. You can't go to court. That's what a bench warrant is. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. What you have to go to court for? Probation. Well, what you do to get on probation, then? Man, I've been on probation for like five years. Hey, yeah. hey better not have me on probation. I'm not really too worried about these court dates. I don't know. I mean, now that I'm 18, legally, they can't hold me no more than 120 days. As soon as I get this legal trouble out of the way, I know I'm going to have a good life. I have all the essential tools and capabilities to carry me anywhere I want to go. But it's just um, me finding a way to use them. How bad? I mean, yeah, you can, you can move are you sure? Yeah. Okay. No talking in the hallway. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we're going up to holding. You're going to be going to your detention hearings. We get up to holding, you're going to be in the cells, you're just going to have to wait for your court. I wish I could just go back to when I was 10 years old. With the knowledge that I have now, I could be anywhere if I wouldn't have started messing around with the drugs. OK, Mr. Starkey, come around here to the elevator, if you will, please. It's not like we wake up that morning and say, um, I'm going to go out and do this. I'm going to go rob this person. OK, you guys just be patient until you're ready for court, all right? We don't mean to be bad. 